No, no, those those Concords, no. I never liked them in the old days. I, I know okay. everybody likes them for their design, but I'm not going for design. It, I'm, they were pretty. You could get the pink, blue, this, that. They still exist, you know. I, I, oh, yeah. I was, oh, yeah. yeah. They have, I, I was about to buy them because they have a special uh, digital version for digital recording but i know if i don't know what it does but uh, they had a ver they have a version like that and but they were too expensive i said nah i'm not gonna do that for a couple of uh maxi vinyl 12 inches I had, so. yeah exactly sorry i i dj'd out there rudy i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> have we got tom what am i seeing there yeah. i'm seeing uh, tom's multi-view i think we have to chat once about the DJing, Mike. I have some great stories about it, but we are not going to do it now. <laughs> Got it. Let's Got it. Have go. Okay, guys, I think we've got Tom. Um, Tom, you're sending us your multi view. Uh, is this the this is the behind the scenes shot? I take it. He's muted. I uh, can probably unmute him. There we go. You're unmuted now, Tom. Well, that's a rare occasion for me. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. It's still it's still Sorry. morning for some of us in the civilized world. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, is is this simulcasting, uh, Tom? Uh, what are we doing? Damned if I know. Let's find <laughs> out. It's, um, I mean, no, here I, I am. You... Here I am having my 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 Saturday morning routine, and my wife comes in and says to me ten minutes ago, "Aren't you supposed to be on this show in ten minutes?" And I said, "No, no, no. That's at noon, Eastern." Oh no, that's now. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear, dear. Oh, we're, we're very uh, happy that you made it, Tom. And uh, so. Um, Right. Well, you te you tell us what's happening. Um, you've probably got more clear than I have at the moment. <laughs> well, all I can say is a brain is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah. So, uh, so Giles, do you want this uh, behind the door uh, backroom feed, or do you want the regular feed? Um, if you're broadcasting it on your channel as the normal program, then we, we could put the normal program on your channel and we can have the behind the scenes feed for people to have a look at Okay. Uh, if they wish. Um, okay. That way you've got a bit of choice. All right. If you're happy with that? Yeah, yeah. I know. I just, I, I tried to put as much in the multi view as, as, you know, I'm really not using that much today. Um, so let's, uh, let's go with it. What do you say? Yeah, just two seconds uh, okay. while, while Martin presses a button. It's Martin running right, press, okay. Martin is pressing a button? Oh my goodness. Yes. That is a yeah, dangerous. dangerous thought. Okay, let's put one more thing <laughs> up here. Um, pre -show. Okay, so, so we yours, Tom? No, it's not. Not yet. Um, is it all mine? Oh my gosh! Okay, hold on a second, guys. We're still in sort of the 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 little that that moment of time between pre-show and show. So hang on one second. I wanted to put one more thing up in the um, in the. Well, this uh, is good. Is this... Hold on a second. Oh, there it is. This is, it is. This, this is, is what it's like when you're doing a, a show, isn't it? There's always the last minute tweaks, so this is good for people to see. Yeah, well, this is yeah, this is not even to the point of last minute tweaks. Okay, all right. The reason I wanted to put those last two, thank you. Whoa. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> ah, even, it's reverse. Sorry for that. Yeah. Even woer. I love it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> um, golly. Okay. A uh, couple quick questions. What I see on Zoom, is that what's being broadcast or is just what's in the little yellow box being broadcast, Giles, on Zoom? I'm, bro I'm broadcasting what you're sending out full screen. 
Um, but if anybody else send, uh, speaks, it will switch to them. So just okay. be aware of that, please. Okay. Please, right. everybody else, keep yourself muted unless you okay. want to. Okay. It's okay. All right. Talk to them. Gotcha. 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 All right. Okay. Well then, let's um, let's see if we can make a show of it. Um, we probably ought to start with our regular start. So um, so let's do that. We're going to fade to black and um, and start Periscope, and then we'll start the recording, and then we'll have the jaws of death come in, and then it'll come back to me. So we'll make kind of a full loop. This will be fun. This will be fun. And so the four people that are watching get to see. Okay, let's see. No, we've got more than four. Let's let's look real quickly. Um, yeah, I'll just be watching the live stream actually. Yeah, but just by way of um, a footnote, still still kind of pre-show stuff here. In fact, let's make it official. Um, whoops, that's not the pre-show I wanted, but that's okay. That was my pre-show from from the other day with Zach Adams. Boy, that was a good show. If you didn't, if you guys didn't see it, you need to see it. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook or Periscope. And we'll go ahead and start the Periscope feed right now. Please come on over uh, for this broadcast to easternshorebroadcasting.com. That way you can get on the chat or you can go to stepbackintime.tv and click chat and get in on that chat. There probably are more people there on that chat right now. Um, and then you can watch, you can either watch uh, th this show feed right here or you can watch the, um, yeah, you know how to do a, can I capture that? Anyway, go, go to stepbackintime.tv and you can see the behind the scenes feed of this one, which um, there ought to be a way for me to, well, I won't do it now. Anyway, okay. So um, let's get started with the show show. Uh, looks like we've got some folks in my chat room in Africa and in India and in Nepal <laughs> and, and maybe in Indiana. Um, an interesting group. All right, here we go. Enough, enough idle jit jet. Let's go. Well, hello, welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair, and this is a special edition of Streaming Idiots, a special Saturday morning edition because, yes, it is morning here in Alabama. It is 11 11 Central Time, which is like 11 minutes after noon Eastern Time. Funny little story, of course, you know, me, time zones, can't get them right. Here it is at uh, 10 till noon excuse me, 10 till 11 Central Time, and I'm just sitting around enjoying my morning, and my wife says, hey, aren't you supposed to be on a show at noon Eastern? And I said, yeah, that's noon Eastern. Wait, that's 10 minutes. <laughs> so so they say it's afternoon in Canada. It's 12-12. So if you're, uh, if you're tuning in just now, you're on time. You're not late as, as usual. We're delighted to have you here. Uh, this is actually a simulcast with StreamFest. StreamFest Live is a, a wonderful event that started at 5 a.m. Eastern time this morning uh, and is sweeping across the world uh, time zone by time zone until this evening. I am delighted to be asked to be a part of it. And uh, we, we've got a, a time slot at noon today, and then at 3 p.m. Eastern this afternoon. This morning we are going to we were we were going to do a studio tour, and um, and that's going to have to be postponed until a regular date. And and then I said, you know, I I did just get this brand new box in yesterday from two days ago, excuse me, from PTZ Optics. And it is a, a PTZ Optics camera. And I have resisted. It's been sitting around begging me saying, Tom, open me, open me. And I've resisted that uh, because I wanted to open it here on the show today. And we can see that it is a PTZ uh, 20X. So that's a 20X zoom. SDI, which means it's not the USB version. 
a GY, which means it's gray, and a G2, which means it's generation two. So we're going to do that in just a second. Um, so we'll, we'll set that off to the side. And you can see that we have a, uh, we have a special little cam set up for that one. Nothing fancy. Um, nothing fancy. Okay. So big shout out, big shout out before we go any further to the guys and gals of World of Live Streaming because they are the hosts of this event today. And they have been plotting and planning probably since they heard about StreamFest in Atlanta a couple of months ago. And they said, you know, some of us are, are, are overseas. Some of us are in a, a different part of the U.S. And we're just not going to be able to get there for StreamCon because the idea for StreamCon was that you're meeting face to face. And they said, well, you know, we've got this great technology. Let's put on a streaming festival and do it all over the world from all over the world at the same time. What a great idea. What a great idea. This is absolutely going to catch on. And before we know it, it's going to be 24 hour uh, going all over the world, both hemispheres and, and, uh, and, and all the major continents. Um, I, can't, I can't wait to see that. And, and for those of you that are junkies with this kind of stuff, you know, that's, that's a lot of coffee and, and Mountain Dew to stay up 24 hours to watch it all. But the good news is, at least I guess, it's being recorded somewhere. <laughs> So, so you'll be able to watch it in more manageable chunks. And, and from what I could tell in, in tuning into some parts of it this morning, it was really great content. So, so to, to Giles and Kenny and Merle and Martin and, and Rudy, I know I'm going to forget somebody. And, um, oh, come on, Tom. Uh, Tommy. And, yeah, I'm sure I've forgotten somebody else. Yeah. Um, Jan, thank you. There we go. This this disembodied Stage. voice pops in and says, "Tom, these are the ones you forgot." And Dave, that's right. I, how could I forget Dave? Goodness gracious! And then you know their presenters like like Jens gave this marvelous presentation this morning about NDI and VMix Call, and I and I just loved it, and 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 was so proud of how well he did in that broadcast. And then, of course, you know, Mike Latta, who, who was back there with Noah on the Ark back in the days of the early days of streaming, um, you know, he dusts off all these treasures that he's had hanging around for a while and, and tells us all about it and fills us in on the history. You know, most of us just sort of popped into to live streaming in the last decade or so. And Mike says, no, you know, there, there was life before streaming idiots, you know. <laughs> so hat, hat tip to Mike. And then, uh, of course, um, on this past Wednesday, we had a special evening time streaming idiot show. So the world of live streaming guys jumped into my time slot with, with my knowledge and, and approval. And, and Rudy did a magnificent job of producing the show from Belgium that brought in guests like me here in Alabama and Jim Jacobs up the road in Alabama. And Rudy did just a, a marvelous job, for, especially for his first time out of the box on that kind of thing. It can be, uh, it can be exciting and a little scary. Um, and then after you get past scary, it's kind of like, okay, well, I'll just sleep late and you know, show up five minutes after the show is supposed to start. So hat tip to all you guys. Hat tip to all you guys. Um, so let's see. Let's um, let's get to the unboxing, shall we? This is going to be fun. This is. Gonna, and by the way, in case I forget to mention it, and I won't, but in case I do, uh, coming up at three o'clock Eastern this afternoon, we're doing a uh, we're doing. A, it's kind of an unboxing. You could call it an unbagging, uh, but mostly it's a review of the wireless. Um, What's it called? The, 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 the wireless HDMI um, camera transmitter and receiver that, uh, that, um, that Howard Jones has put together. And he sent me the whole kit. Uh, and we're actually going to sell it in our store at Eastern Shore Broadcasting. But, but Howard's going to be on the show this afternoon at 3 o'clock, so you want to tune in for that. He's not a big in front of the camera scenes guy, so you want to make sure you give him a lot of kudos. Um, because he, he does does great work behind the scenes. Okay, enough of that. Let's let's go to um, let's go to this shot, and um, and we'll do a little unboxing here. And this is the PTZ Optics 20X. This is the the current 
version. Let's see. Let's get a little webcam over here so we can see a little better. There we go. Don't pay any attention to the green screen and all the other green stuff behind me. That doesn't exist. Remember, it's green. You can't see it. Um, so, neat little latch on this box. This box actually was inside of another box when I received it, so they didn't ship this box. This box is the internal box. And by the way, if you're ever shipping any of this kind of stuff, uh, you want to hang on a second. Let's do something fun. Um, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there, and we're just going to put me in the shot, you know. People say Tom doesn't have an ego. Yeah, he does. So let's just put me there, and then we'll blow me up a little bit, and then get me out of the way that way. That way I can see me. <laughs> okay, so somebody shipped me a PC the other day. Um, it was one I built, and it was coming in for a tune-up and a warranty repair. Um, something that they had broken that they wanted me to fix and unfortunately they single boxed it and they put in like you know five little pieces of, of air pack and it came in almost destroyed it was it was just it made my heart sink okay here we go so the first thing we get when we open up is we get this great manual great manual and frankly there's only one page that I ever read in the manual um, yes I do read the manual and somewhere in here, let's find it real quick, is the page that tells us the important stuff, which is which setting to set the camera on to get the video rate that you want, the, the bit rate and the resolution. And come on, Thomas. We may have to look at it later if we can't find it right away. Looks like a new, new version of the manual, by the way. Um, all right, system select is number three. And that is the little dial on the back. Well, we just may have to show you the dial. If I can't find the Oh, yeah, here it is. This is what I want. This is what I want. This is the most important part. Now, you probably can't see that very well, but that determines what the resolution and frame rate of the camera are going to be. Those little settings, we'll keep that handy because we're going to need that in just a second to set this guy up. Um, so we've got uh, very well packed and well designed packaging, by the way. A little piece of cardboard as a spacer. And then, of course, we've got, uh, we've got some batteries for our remote control. Yes, you have an infrared remote control. Um, and then uh, we've got a power cord. And we might need that. But, you know, all the new Gen 2 cameras are coming in. Let's up, adjust that just a little bit. They're coming in with PoE built in. So all you have to do is plug in that Ethernet cable. Oh, really cool remote control. Again, infrared. And you've got to be in front of the camera in order to use this. You can't be behind the camera. And I'm not quite sure how far under the camera you can be. Uh, this is a, uh, oh, this is a, a serial. Do you recognize this? Let's see if... Let's see if uh, Mike Latta can recognize this, because this would be back in his day. This is one of those dinosaur connections right here. Let's see. Um, see if he can recognize that right there. Yes, that is an RS-232. Do you remember having to set up a serial printer uh, using an, the RS-232 connection? And you had to, I, I can remember taking these cables apart and jumping the cables apart to make the doggone printers work because the cables were all configured differently. Anyway, this plugs into the back of the camera and this plugs into the PC and it gives you control. Or this may plug into a special controller. We'll have to see if we've got one of those. So, and then we've got the other part of the power connector, the little brick part. There we go, a nice piece of foam that keeps everything set and we're going to pull that foam out and you can see it's got a cutout shaped just for the camera so this camera is traveling surrounded by foam now keep in mind this travel this camera has traveled from the other side of the world and then it's traveled to pennsylvania and then it's traveled to alabama and it is in pristine condition this is the way you want everything so we're going to bring it all out in its foam and we're going to that's all there is. There are no other goodies in the box. There are no t-shirts or mouse pads or pens or anything like that. 
Maybe PTZ Optics ought to do a little something like that. What do you think? So we've got this great piece of foam, and you can see it's just foam. We're going to wiggle the camera out. You know, this is the very first unboxing I've ever done. I'm kind of excited about it. I used to think they were pretty hokey until I slept late and had to have a, a run to the studio to, to be on time. Okay, so we're now out of the package. And you know, the air in here was Chinese air. Can you believe that? Better not be breathing that stuff, probably for the lead. All right, so here's our little cam. Now it's come in with a lens cap. And let me, let me put a question to the chat room. <laughs> What's the first thing we do at this point? <laughs> yes, if you want to see video, you take off the lens cap, but save this. In fact, save everything because you never know when you, want to, when you want to loan this to somebody. And if you do loan it to them, you want to make sure that you loan it to them with, with all the stuff, including the lens cap. And you, you write down on all this stuff, save. If you, if you loan out your stuff, Make sure you write save this material on it so that they save it and send it back to you. Okay, so we've got this guy and, and he's, 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 he's very flexible from the very beginning um, and we'll power him on in just a second and you can see what power on looks like. But this is the, the important part of this little camera right here. And you can see it has got almost every connection known to man. Um, in the top left corner, it's got a, a line in, and that's for a microphone. So you can actually hook up a mic to this guy. Right next to that is a, uh, a jack for uh, composite output. Right below that is the, uh, the, the RS, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the RJ45 connector for Ethernet. Next to that is the HDMI output. Next to that, the big silver one is the SDI output. Next to that is a USB that is not output. That is for access to the camera. Uh, frankly, I've never used it. Um, next to that is the, uh, the DC power input and then the, then the switch. Above that, you see the two big silver squares with the black circles inside of them. That's the, uh, the, the control. We, I showed you the uh, RS-232 cable just a minute ago. Actually, you pl it, th these guys uh, actually daisy chain. Uh, so you go from camera to camera to camera if you want to use the RS-232 control. Uh, the little green jack there, right there, is for a different type of control. And then the most important one of all, our little dial. Let's see if I can get in real close on that one. That is the system select. And you can see the little yellow arrow in the middle of the yellow circle. And then around that are letters and numbers that indicate what the camera is going to send in terms of video. And so I've got, and I'm just going to rest it down here in the uh, PTZ Optics approved position that allows you to change this. And so we've got uh, 0 through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Those are all the options. Not all of those are filled out in the manual, um, but we've got a choice of 1080p 60. Wow. 1080p 50. So you know right now this is a, a PAL camera as well. 1080i60, 1080i50, 720p60, 720p50, 1080p30, 1080p25, 720p30, 720p25, and then a couple of blanks, and then we get down to 50, excuse me, 576i and 480i. I'm not going to ever be using those. Um, what's notable is we don't have any 2997s or 5994s here. These are all even frame rates. So let's go ahead and set this guy up. If we're going to use him here in my studio, we're going to use him at 1080p 30. If I were tempted to use this in a sports arena, of course, I would, I would set it for 1080p 60. But let's find something that we can change it with here. Um, can we change, does, does Giles have any um, tools on him that we could use to change it with? No, Giles doesn't have I'm, any not, tools. Nothing that I can send you, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, no. And let's see if, if uh, the VMix Banana Man, can we use the VMix Banana Man to change him? Uh, no, that's not going to work. Can we use the, uh, the PTZ Optics Man? Perhaps the PTZ Optics Man will let us change him. 
You know, here he is, the guy is playing with toys on Saturday morning. Um, th this, is, this is too fun. All right, let's pull out the old handy uh, razor knife, which functions as a screwdriver in a pinch. And so we want to go to 1080p30. So we're going to set that little dial and hear it click to number six. That's going to be 1080p30, and that's where it's going to stay. Now, I suppose you guys actually want to see this work. Um, so let's see if we can bring in some power and some video cables. We don't need the remote, so we'll set that aside. We don't need the control cable, so we'll set that aside. We don't need the lens cap. We'll set that aside. We don't need the batteries. We do need the power brick and the power cord. And I've got a co I, uh, SDI cable over there we'll plug in. So let's pull this out. I mean, this is a bona fide real unboxing because it's never been. I mean, the last people to, ch to, uh, to touch this little twist tie did not speak English. Um, so they also just do these things in a way that they don't ever come out easily. Look at that. You, you can't be sure of that, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to plug this guy in the back into the DC connection. And just for safety, we're just going to turn it off for the moment. And then we're going to plug this guy. Well, let's go ahead and undo the Chinese twist here. And we'll get that guy open. There we go. And get him plugged in. And then we've got a power strip on the other side of the desk and an SDI cable on the other side of the desk. So sit tight. Don't go anywhere. I'm just going to walk around the desk. And I'll be right back. Take out my earbuds here. See my uh, $9.99 earbuds from Walmart. That's the fancy stuff that we use here at Streaming Idiots. All right. Hold on. Don't go away. And yes, short pants. All right. Walking around behind. Trying to find where we can plug in. Find an open plug here somewhere. Do you ever have the problem where you can't find an open plug here somewhere? And you have to unplug something else and hope it wasn't something you were using. Okay, so that's power. And then we've got a handy dandy SDI cable here that we were using on our Marshall Cam. We just got the Marshall Cam a week ago and just got a new lens for it yesterday. There's the cable flopping in. And we'll get that Marshall Cam dialed in here in the next week or so. And we can show, show you how we're doing all that. And let's see if we can't zoom in just a tad here. There we go. All right, so we've got uh, SDI. We're going to get Giles out of the way for a second. We're going to get Banana Man and Streaming Idiot Man out of the way and make our connection here. And if everything goes well, when we hit the switch, it's going to do the, uh, the setup. Whew, boy, that was <laughs> a, half, a half a second there where I wasn't sure what was going to happen. There we go. All right. All right. So now let's see if we can. And, and this SDI cable is connected to a... Um, Blackmagic DeckLink mini recorder PCIe card that's in my production PC. So let's go ahead and add an input in vMix for a camera and we'll select the mini recorder. Um, we've set this camera up to be 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second. So let's see if that'll be our first choice and see what we get there. And sure enough, um, 
that's what we get. We get a camera image. Let's go ahead and show you the camera image. There it is right there. Um, now, we have no way to control that camera. We can use the remote control or we can hook a, um, a LAN cable up to it and control it through vMix. Let's see. Um, Martin, how are we doing on time here? I, I don't remember how much time I've got for this slot. Was it 30 minutes or, or an hour, including questions? It's an hour, you know including I'm questions, Tom. Earbuds in to hear your um, answer. Here we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's an hour, including questions, Tom. And there's uh, about sort of 22, 23 minutes left to the end of the question. So um, yeah, just, just fill the slot up as you wish. OK, all right. Uh, well, let's let's take a, a pause at this second while I load the, the remote control up with batteries and see if we've got any questions in chat. Um, looks like Dan Slider is um, trying to give me a lesson on time zones. Um, and that's all. I don't see anything there in his chat, in your chat room. Let's look in the uh, Streaming Idiots chat. And um, Rich Ignacio says, is this live or is this Memorex? Apparently Rich is living in the same world that Mike Latto lives in, which is that ancient, ancient world um, where time stands still. Yeah, this is live, Rich. This is live. As those of you know that, that Rich is the, uh, the jet ski streaming guy, and he flies all over the US um, streaming jet ski racing. All right, so it's as easy as putting the batteries in the correct way. And if I've done this correctly, let's see if we can just without t doing anything else, let's just see if that works. Hey, look at there. First time out of the box. It works. You can see my light stand. Look at that. And the, the, uh, the fancy $29 lighting that we use here at Streaming Idiots. Oh, this is a different control. Wow. This control, and let's pull out the old control. Do we see the old control here? Yeah, here it is. You can see the Gen 1 control is about you know, probably 20% larger. Um, the buttons are, yeah, the, the, the new control is just more compact. It's skinnier, it's shorter, um, weighs about the same, and has a bunch of buttons on here. Holy cow. We'll have to experiment with that. It's got F keys on it. Well, the old one had F keys too, but it's got a zoom. It's got a slow zoom and a fast zoom button. That's nice. So if you're controlling it here, and then it's got the ability to set presets, and then of course all your pan tilt functions, as well as if I think if I hit the menu button, I don't think you'll see. Oh yes, look at that! It's sending the menu over SDI. It didn't ever used to do that. So now we've got the ability to set c color image, the PTZ, the noise reduction. Oh, look at all that stuff. And we'll hit menu again for exit. How about that? That's cool. Now, one of the things that this, this camera is supposed to be able to, to do, and it's, it's really funny. Uh, oh, you know what? Does the old contra controller, does the new controller control the old camera? Ah, look at that. Okay, so we've got two cameras uh, that either control will control. Let's see if the old control controls the new camera. It does. Look at there. So we're backwards compatible. Okay. Interesting. Supposedly, and we'll get our shot trimmed back up right here. Martin K doesn't like it if I don't have an, if I if I have too much white space up there. Supposedly, this new camera is supposed to supposed to have a, um, a lower latency over IP than the previous Gen 2 versions. Um, 
in Gen 1 and I think the early Gen 2 versions, the, the uh, latency over IP was about, about 300 milliseconds. So if you were dealing with, with, uh, with audio that wasn't coming out of the camera, that was generated through a mixer or a USB mic or something like that, then you would expect that uh, you were going to have to adjust your audio to compensate for that. Um, and 300 milliseconds was about the number. Um, I had some folks that uh, were using this camera on a network they were sharing with, um, with other things and they had to, because of all the network traffic, they had to delay the audio 600 milliseconds. So, it, so obviously it's going to depend on your use case. Um, but you, you, we, we'll be testing this one later today or tomorrow. Um, I don't want to try to set it up now because, because you know, obviously you've got to set an IP address for it and those kinds of things. Um, but it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see if this guy has that uh, ability to have reduced latency. The other thing that this guy will do, I think, and I'll have to confirm it, is that this guy will um, be upgradable to NDI as a firmware upgrade. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. So we can take out the SDI cable, um, we can take out the power cable, and we can plug in just uh, Ethernet here with PoE and have this appear on your network as an NDI source, be powered, and can be controlled um, through either your IP controller, if you have one, um, through some IP software, or through vMix's IP control of this particular camera. So very versatile camera. Uh, the retail on this guy is uh, $17.99. The map pricing, that is the pricing that PTZ Optics allows dealers like me to advertise it at is $16.99. But frequently we will bundle this with vMix software or we'll bundle this with one of our live streaming gear PCs. And so there's kind of a bundling savings, which we are not allowed to identify <laughs> like this, but we can, we can quote you um, personally when the time comes. So let's check and see if we've got any questions here. We'll look in the chat. Um, Paul has got, oh, let's see, Dan says, is this a Gen, Gen 2 camera NDI? This is not the NDI version. The NDI version has not been released yet. They've announced it. Uh, we're expecting to have it available the end of August or um, the beginning of September. It just sort of depends on when they are comfortable getting it out there to the, the general public. Um, Let's bring me back in right there. There we go. Boy, I was feeling left out. Um, but my understanding is that this camera will be upgradable to NDI as a firmware update. Uh, the retail on that is 600, but I understand if you purchase that now or close to now, you can buy it for 50% off 300, so it makes it a pretty good deal. That is a $1,700 camera with a $300 uh, NDI upgrade becomes a $2,000 NDI HD camera. Not a bad deal, I think. Um, Paul D. from UK says, can you select which camera to control with the remote control if you have more than one camera? Um, Paul, if we're talking about this remote control, uh, it doesn't... I don't know. How about that? I don't know. It does have a... Uh, let's switch to this cam for just a second. We're going to put this cam up there in the multi-view so that you guys can see it better. Um, the That's the old control. The new control does have a series of camera buttons here. So my guess is that you can uh, go through an identification process um, and then that allows you to do presets. Frankly, I don't ever use the remote control. Um, number one, you've got to be directly in front of the camera to use it. If you've got the camera mounted um, on the ceiling, upside down, pointed somewhere, you know, you're going to have to get on a scaffolding to use this. It would be much better to use the, um, well, the, the IP control. Um, but you would have to, of course, have to have uh, Ethernet plugged into it. But I, I really do think Ethernet is the way to go. So yes, uh, I think there's a way to set this up so that it controls separate cameras um, using the keypad here. But so far as the 
and and also so far as the presets are concerned. Uh, David, David says, uh, Tom, how would you control this camera to change shots if you had it over 100 feet away as your crowd camera? I'm not familiar with the RS-232 cable links. Um, David, 100 feet away, um, I would have this camera um, powered over Ethernet and I would be receiving the video over Ethernet and that would give me the ability to control the camera over Ethernet. And, and I think, you know, especially in a, a pre-wired crowd situation, to, uh, to have one cable that, that you need to run and that would be just, you know, Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, uh, that's going to be the, the, the real benefit there is one cable and in fact, in fact, uh, wait, there's more. Um, this afternoon when we have uh, Howard on to talk about the wireless control, I didn't mention it earlier, but um, oh heck, wait a second, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Why talk about it when you can show it, right? All right. Now you guys are not allowed to make fun of my bag. This bag right here was a gift from my spouse. And you say, yes, that's right. But it's the contents of the bag that are important. To heck with what the bag looks like. Hold on. We're all twisted up here. We we're just having fun like Saturday morning watching cartoons. All right, inside the bag, among other things, is a battery pack. And also with the battery pack is the ability to connect to just about anything known to man. Um, and this battery should be charged up. And I think there's a connector in here that will connect to this camera. I'll have this set up so that this afternoon we can, we'll, we'll use this camera and illustrate how the camera can actually be um, battery powered and uh, send its video wirelessly and, and be controlled wirelessly. So the whole PTZ camera, its, it's complete PTZ function and its uh, sending in a, a video and its power can all happen without anything being attached to it other than just the, the devices that we would see. We would see here a battery, a radio transmitter. Um, it's, it's really going to be kind of cool. Um, let's see. Um, Rudy is answering Paul's question there. So we're looking back through the questions. Um, Rudy says, uh, you have to push some knobs in a certain sequence to pair the cameras with the remote. Yeah, but who wants to go to all the trouble of doing that? I mean, it just, yeah, you could do that. But I, I guess there would be situations where you would need or you would want to be able to control it with a remote control. But I just can't imagine those situations. I would much rather, frankly, I would much rather control it with vMix. And that way I'm doing everything within the same, the same software. Okay, let's take a look over at the Streaming Idiots chat room and see if we have any questions over there. Is it live or is it Memorex? We've already answered that one. Um, Kenny says, to have vMix control PTZ, is this done via IP address brought into vMix? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, and, and unfortunately, this camera is not hooked up to IP. Oh, well, actually, my other camera is. So let me capture a screenshot of the uh, vMix desktop here. And um, let's see if we can't show you. Yeah, here we go. All right, so this is the desktop. Pay no attention to the window on the right that goes off to infinity. Um, but I can, uh, let's see, let's add, an, well, let's see if we can do this. Let's add an input. It's a stream. No, I think I have to change the, the address on this camera. I don't think this that IP address exists. Nope. Nope, it doesn't exist. So we have uh, we've asked the PC to go find an IP address that doesn't exist. It's going to take a second for it to come back and say, "Yeah, sorry, <laughs> there, there's nothing there, Tom. You're an idiot." 
uh, we already knew that. Okay, well, maybe this afternoon we'll have a chance to, to set up the new camera with an IP address on this network here and show you how you we can control that. It's, it's really a lot of fun. Um, Erwin C. says, can we program the camera to do a specific sweep just like the weather cams do? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that one, um, by a specific sweep. I know you can, um, in, in vMix, and again, this camera is not set up in vMix, um, you can tell it to have a preset that would be, uh, you know, let's see, let's go back to the cam. Um, so we're, we're going to have a preset that's set right here, and then we would have a second preset that's set right here. And if you moved from preset to preset, then you would get, um, whoops, I'm controlling both cameras unintentionally. Uh, if you move from preset to preset, then you would get that sweep. Um, and the preset could be done with the remote control and could be done also with the, um, with what? What would it be? It would be the, uh, the IP controller uh, in yeah, it, It's more like if it, that it goes from left to right, up and down, following a specific pattern all the time, round and round, without doing anything. Um, in that case, uh, you would probably use a combination of, um, let's see if we can switch back to a shot that, oh my goodness gracious, look at that shot. That's, that's, <laughs> that's not the shot we want. Um, in that case, you would have a combination of presets and then you would put the presets into a playlist and then use the playlist to uh, to control the, the the shots, I think that's that would be how you would want to go about doing that. So it would be uh, you know it wouldn't necessarily be a, a one button click um, to do that, but it would it would have to uh, be a series of presets in vMix to do that. All right, Paul says, can you select which camera to control with the remote control if you have more than one camera? Paul, I have no clue. I, I, obviously here, um, I'm having a little trouble with that. What I did find is that the old remote uh, controls both cameras. The new remote controls the pan tilt, but does not control the zoom in the old camera. So they've, they've made a, a change there. So it's not a, a complete legacy uh, support with that one. Uh, Kenny says, uh, Tom, I see the, the cam has audio input as well. I would really enjoy seeing a demo on that as well. Well, you'll just have to buy one. I mean, come on, Kenny, I can't do everything for you. <laughs> I'm teasing. Actually, no, um, my very first video on the PTZ cameras, which was probably two years ago or so, uh, we set that up. And we, we set it up because we wanted to see if that, uh, that, that 300 millisecond delay in the, in the video if the audio would be uh, delayed by the same amount. And I think what we found out is that the audio wasn't carried over Ethernet, but it was carried over HDMI or SDI. Um, and at that point, we just sort of you know, stopped testing, didn't go any further, because frankly, I don't want to run my audio through the camera. But um, if you've got a scenario where you would have to do that, yeah, you know, we can set up a demo and do that and see. Uh, Kenny says, I do not think it will do a slow pan automatically. Um, you know, what does automatically mean anymore? Um, you know, automatically means that we have told something to do something um, and it does it all by itself. Well, we can set it up to do a, a slow pan um, using a combination of presets in vMix and the playlist, which would be a, either a looping playlist that goes from preset one to preset two and then back and then forth and back and then forth. Um, or we can just have it hit a series of, of two or three presets and then stop. Um, so there are ways to, uh, to, to automatically set it up to do that, but you're still going to have to initiate it. Um, let's see. Uh, Dan Slider says uh, vMix also allows you to memorize camera positions. Yes, 
Yes, you would. You would basically you you add a camera shot within the PTZ control, and so you have uh, if you have six six shots, you essentially have six camera inputs, and you treat each one like a camera. Um, Paul, do you have to push some knobs in a certain sequence to pair the cameras with the remote? That was Rudy. Um, Dave says a slow pan would be a sweep. Well, you guys are using all these video terms that are way above my head. <laughs> Um, and, and David said, said that's how with two presets. Okay, very good. Uh, G Gavin says some PTZ cameras can be set to patrol mode. They auto pan tilt zoom on a set pattern with re which repeats. And that would be a cam that's used for security functions. Yes, a CCTV application, those kinds of things. Security cams, traffic cams. Um, that's not going to be this cam. This cam is intended for a, a broadcast environment or a uh, uh, like a, a, a boardroom, conference room type environment. Oh golly, I've been warned in the chat room that I have three minutes left uh, or else this giant hook is going to come out. This virtual hook is going to come out and get me. Let's see if there are any other questions. Um, uh, Jan Janssen says, is the video latency with RSTP, RTSP a lot bigger than SDI? The SDI latency is hmm, maybe 10 milliseconds, maybe 20. Um, the RTSP latency in the cameras that, in the camera I'm using right now, which is Gen 1, was about 300 uh, milliseconds to live. And the word on the street is that this new, and not the word on the street, frankly, but the word from, from Paul Richards of PTC Optics is that this new camera has less latency over IP than the older versions. And to quote him, he said, it rivals SDI. And I haven't tested that. That's the whole reason I got this new, new demo camera um, is so that uh, we could test that and find out and you know, take the camera apart, put it back together, do all the kinds of things to, to become ultimately familiar with it. Um, here comes the hook. Okay, let's see if I can bring up my, uh, my Zoom room so I can see if I'm fixing to get hooked. Um, any more questions for anybody? Um, if not, if not, before you hook me, before you hook me, let's, let's close out this show the right way. So shall we close out this show the right way? Here we go. Thanks, Tom. And now we'll stop the recording now that Giles has jumped in there. Golly. <laughs> well, I had to do that, didn't I? I had to leave my mark on the end of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That makes it that much more personal. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Tom. That was brilliant. Um, we really enjoyed that. And um, we will look forward to seeing you in, I think it was a couple of hours, isn't it, when you're back on? Um, Two o'clock uh, Central Time. Long? Two, two so, hours. Yeah, 8, 8 p.m. half time, yeah. So that's right. Uh, excellent. Um, so I'm sure we'll have some more questions for you by then as well, which would be great. So um, we will look forward to seeing you then. Very Once good. Again, thank you very, very much. Good. Who's up next? Jim Jacobs follows you in, in just a couple of minutes' time. So uh, between times, we will give you the, uh, the test card and... Uh, uh, Feel free to uh, chat in Zoom, but uh, we will interrupt you in two minutes. Ooh, music. Horrible, isn't it? But it keeps the... Um, <laughs> okay, it, it folks, we're the muted test card up on, on the screen. The streaming idiots. Oh, excuse me, on the uh, step back in time. Is Tom Broadcast. still there? But we're um, Tom. We're live. I expect so. Tom, you're welcome to stay with us for Jim's. Yeah, I was just talking to the audience on streaming idiots. Um, ah, I, okay. I didn't want to talk over you guys. 
So I'm gonna mute myself here for just a minute. So I hope you guys will tune back in at uh, 3 o'clock Eastern. And we probably ought to mute Giles in the background too. Let's see if we can't turn him down. Um, yeah, can we mute Giles? No. Okay, Jim, your audio is on now. We should put it here. Let's, let's find our I'm audio. I'm here. Mixer. Greetings. You're on in about one minute. And we'll just turn him down. There we go. All right. So tune in to Step Back in Time TV, stepbackintime.tv now so that you can watch the Jim Jacobs episode and then come back here at, uh, at 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central, noon Pacific time um, on Streaming Idiots. And we will uh, we'll have the, uh, the wireless HDMI camera receiver transmitter with Howard Jones. You won't want to miss that. And we'll, we'll probably also um, be working and get this little guy right here um, so that he's hooked up uh, with, with, by battery and by, um, by Ethernet and then by wireless Ethernet. It'll, it'll be a fun experiment. Um, so we'll do that. And we'll do that all live this afternoon and take your questions, of course. So we are going to drop the feed now. Tune in to stepbackintime.tv so that you can tune in and watch Jim Jacobs, and we will uh, we will catch you guys um, later on. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to go to uh, the the runout screen as we call it because there's so much delay between uh, the time where it's live for me and then the time that you see it. If I cut the stream right now, then it'll cut right in the middle of. I mean, it'll, it'll cut what I said 30 seconds ago or 20 seconds ago or 10 seconds ago. So we're just going to go to the, uh, the, what I call the closed screen. So we'll be back at 3 o'clock Eastern.